We're going racing. That's right, you heard it. I don't think you guys, the audience of YouTube, have seen me race one time since we started the channel. And I know that because I haven't raced since we started the channel, and that's been two years. Uh, and you might ask, like, why in the heck do you wanna race now? You got a lot going on, you got a lot of lessons, you got everything going on, why do you wanna spend your time going racing? And, and the reason was I told myself that I'm not gonna go race another motorcycle. One, if it's not for a big paycheck, and that's not happening anymore. And two, if it's not something that means a lot that I can have a good experience and make a moment from. And uh, so one of my sponsors, Fast House Gear, which I'm sure you guys have seen in the videos, puts on an event called Day in the Dirt. Uh, it's primarily in California, but they're having one on the East Coast, Southeast Coast, and it's called Day in the Dirt South, and it's at Dade City Motocross. And the reason that I wanna make sure that you hear the word Dade City Motocross is because that is the whole reason that I'm going. So I have a history with that track in a major way. Most of you guys probably wonder, where did this guy race? He says he raced professionally, uh, you know, for multiple years, but I don't see his name on any of the results at the Supercrosses or the Outdoors. And the answer is I was at Dade City Motocross. Dade City Motocross used to have a program called the Sponsors Cup. So um, the Monster Energy Sponsors Cup, and it went on to be the Red Bull Sponsors Cup. And what that was is, basically a little wrestling league. Uh, it was a little series that turned into being a really big series, one of the biggest night series in the world. And the fact of the matter is, is that there was 10 to 15 guys there that could go win a race and make 12 to 1500 bucks that night with a $10,000 purse at the end of the year if you won the championship. And at 18, 19 years old, racing a dirt bike, you know, whatever that was, 2008, that was a lot of money, right? So we were competitive like very competitive. And there weren't that many rules there. I remember actually one time the owner of the track, we were getting into it so much on the track that he drew a circle in the middle of, of the track in white chalk and said, if you idiots are gonna fight, go fight in the circle so we can at least watch. Oh, uh, no, not really. That's why I need to get one of these or a punch in the face. Right, so it was just an, a rowdy event, right? And uh, so I'm going back because it's my roots. It's where I came from, it's what built me. And I want to get a little into that story. I'm going to give you guys a brief description of how I became and how the MX Factory became. Um, and it starts at Day City Motocross. Right Tyler Livesey grabbed the whole shot. It didn't take long for Pacone to make a pass on Tyler for the lead. Tyler Livesey is looking to grab another. Tyler Livesey is on a roll. Thinking about this day in the dirt thing. What are you thinking about? I don't know if I'm ready. Oh my God. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. Why? I'm fat and old and out of shape. That's too bad. Full commitment, Tyler. I need to teach you about that. No plan B, bro. I didn't say I'm fat, old, and out of shape. When I got on the mountain bike, I just got on it and did it. Uh, all right, well, you're my motivation for the day. I'm gonna do it. So I want you guys to give some feedback. Let us know in the comments if you're into the vlog style stuff. Uh, this is to be our first little five video series on it being not super structured in education. And of course, we're gonna teach you guys along the way, right? You're gonna learn a lot with my training. I'm gonna try to lose some weight. I'm gonna try to get in a little better shape. I'm gonna try to be on the bike working on some technique stuff before the race. But I really want to know from you guys if you enjoy this type of stuff because we've got like guys like this right here. We've got, he's a funny dude, he looks funny. And uh, we're doing crazy stuff all the time around here. Uh, so if you guys enjoy and you want to see some behind the scenes stuff, uh, let us know in the comments. Uh, I'd be super grateful to uh, give you guys a little more. Uh, but getting into the story, which is the important part, um, so the MX Factory would not exist if it wasn't for Dade City Motocross. It just wouldn't. And the reason for that is uh, when I was a young buck, I decided to move out of my house when I was 16 years old for other reasons uh, to make sure that I could do the best for my life. So I had to quit riding motocross. You can imagine that I was a pretty decent rider at 15. You know, I was doing really good, top five at, at all the amateur nationals in the B class. and and stuff like that, which is fast pace, right? Um, and so I had to quit riding because I had to figure out, one, how to school myself, I had to figure out how to eat, 
I had to figure out a place to live. I lived in my truck for a couple weeks. Uh, you know, I had to figure out a lot of things at a really young age. And so as I did that, moving into 17, 18 years old, I kind of had it figured out. I had some really good people help me along the way. And uh, I got a phone call from Randy Yoho. And uh, Randy Yoho is going to be a pretty prominent part in this series because he owns Dade City Motocross. And he's, he remembered me as a, a, as a rider, a younger rider. And he says, hey, Tyler, I'm starting a series called the Dade City Sponsors Cup Series. Uh, would you ride my bike? He had a bike sponsored from a shop. Would you ride my bike in the series? I'm trying to build a good group of riders to compete every weekend. And uh, my, my answer was yes, but there were stipulations. The stipulation was that I had to go through a three month school with Randy Yo, who is a very good coach, trains James Stewart, Ricky Carmichael, all these guys. I had to go through this school because he remembered how wild I was prior. He knew how crazy I was on the motorcycle and my technique wasn't that good. And of course, me not having a bike at the time, I was like, definitely I'll do whatever it takes. And so I go through this school and little did I know we weren't gonna hit a jump for three months that we were gonna be on the bike three hours a day for three to four days a week on a turn track that had no water, no prep, no anything. If there was ruts there, they were there two months prior. And uh, we would just do one thing, one thing for six, eight, 10 hours at a time until everyone in the group could do that so perfectly they didn't even have to think twice about it. And I hated every second of it, honestly. I hated every, like I dreaded it. And the only reason I went, because I knew I could go racing afterwards on the bike that he was giving me. Um, and I couldn't afford to get one myself. But as I got towards the end of it, and I noticed the difference between me and the other riders, it made me understand and realize that repetition on one technique in the correct building blocks is how you train anyone in anything, right? And this is me being young too. I'm 17, 18 years old at that time. And so starting to realize that it doesn't necessarily sink in and I don't think I'm gonna make it a job or make it a career, or even be giving it back to you guys at that point. But I understood what made someone really great where I didn't before. And uh, so if we fast forward, we raced Sponsors Cup. You know, I went through that process. We didn't hit a jump, we hit ruts. I got so much better with technique, right? Like I was, I went from the guy that known being wild and fast to the guy that was super silky smooth, never fell, never made too many big mistakes. Obviously falling over in some corners, having mistakes were still there, but nothing crazy that was getting me hurt. And uh, so we moved through, we raced the Sponsors Cup Series. We win the championship in year two. We got fourth year, year one, coming in halfway through the series, still got fourth. Year two, we win the championship. And the next two years, uh, I got second by such a small margin to one of my biggest rivals there was at the time is he goes by Pinecone, his name's Mike Picone. We're gonna talk about him in the next episode. We got a long stories to do with that guy and, and a couple others that we wanna make sure uh, we give you guys the right context on how this all went down. Uh, but we just really wanna get on here and say, this is why we're going racing, because it's close to my heart. It's what made me, uh, it's what made the business. It's what made the business that's able to feed other employees and their families. It's like, it, it created such a big, Thing in my life that I feel like I almost owe the time to go back to the track and ride laps around it, even if Mike Picone can deadlift 405 pounds. See you in the next episode.